Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 9th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery as of yesterday. And we're going to scroll through that frontal system rolling through. You can see that precipitation it brought with it across a lot of western Washington, southwest BC. We had some additional showers moving on the coast there as we moved through the afternoon yesterday, and the showers continued as we went through last night and on into this morning here. And you can still see we've got this onshore flow going on, some additional showers now pushing onto the coastline here, and some colder air behind that. But we're going to take a look at what's coming this weekend and the extended forecast here because we may warm up for a bit this weekend as the system tries to dive down towards Northern California. So let's dive into things a little bit more here. Gulf of Alaska troughing, you can see me circling here. And there's Washington and Oregon there, the onshore flows, some cooler air aloft, just moving into western BC as we speak. Take a look at SeaTac yesterday, 66 degrees. That's three degrees above average. Look at that, 0.36 inches of rain and not bad. We'll definitely take it. We're at 0.78 now. We average almost four inches for the month of October. So we're definitely starting to enter our rainy season here across the Pacific Northwest. And if you want to do some spotter training here, go to the or Google it, go NOAA, National Weather Service Spokane, and you can do this stuff online as well. So check it out in class dates, October 16th, 23rd, and the 30th coming up. Now taking a look here at the European Artificial Intelligence versus the GFS. There's Washington State and Oregon. You can see the Gulf of Alaska. You see our onshore flow here, and our troughing out over the Pacific Ocean. Put that into motion, and you can see we're going to be dealing with that system until about Thursday. And we start to build some ridging as a storm system. Looks like the Europeans winning with that a little bit further south track of that upper level low that's weakening as it moves on shore but you can then see the ridge building as we go through this weekend with a very deep gulf of alaska trough this is pacific north american oscillation positive if i've ever seen it and then we scroll up a little bit more here into Sunday, and you can see probably a few nice days coming for the Pacific Northwest, but then we're going to be playing this cat and mouse game with an additional round of systems as we go on in through next week. You can see the difference in the trough strength and the GFS on the right versus the European Artificial Intelligence, and that's what we're going to be watching coming up here. And then we switched that Pacific North American a negative uh, oscillation here with the high pressure out over the Gulf of Alaska and that lower pressure, the troughing here across much of North America. So then we scroll through here off into the extended forecast. They're looking 250 hours plus out this is just purely fantasy out here just kind of seeing what the models are showing here pretty typical stuff for the fall uh, season now looking at the artificial intelligence model here european you can see dealing with these showers as we go through tonight and then we start to dry out again as we go through thursday and friday that system could bring some precipitation to extreme southern oregon it looks like but we are going to be protected as we go through sunday with the frontal system trying to bear down on us here as we go on in through monday and then bringing another round of precipitation monday afternoon it looks like and then additional systems coming through here as we go through wednesday thursday and then maybe even some wetter systems as we go off into the following weekend there we'll see how that works you can kind of see that atmospheric river signature well off into the extent of forecast. Nothing to get too concerned about just yet. That is pretty typical for this time of year either way, and it may disappear altogether. We'll see. And a 15-day precipitation anomaly. We are picking things up this time of year. So, you know, even if you're a little bit below average here, we're still getting some rainfall during this time. And you can see, again, western British Columbia, southwest BC here, picking up the lion's share and a little bit lesser amounts here across Washington and Oregon. And this is the GFS, the kind of scatter shot here just some higher than normal and lower than normal as we go through the next couple of weeks. Now, looking at the North American model, I did want to show this. This is what the Doppler radar may look like here over the next 60 hours. Here we are. It's about 9 a.m. and this would be about 10 a.m. here. You subtract 7 from that and you'd be 10, uh, 10 o'clock here at Pacific Daylight Time. And then we scroll on in through uh, this afternoon. You can see the showers trying to move in here. They don't make too much headway in towards western Washington, or I should say the Puget Sound region. Western Washington, you get a bit more of that activity. And then we go through Thursday and Friday and we start to dry out a little bit here as the system kind of moves into Oregon. I don't I mean it shows a little bit of uh, showery activity here with that it wasn't showing too much of that on the European though, so that's a little bit of a surprise here as we go on into Thursday night into Friday morning but the weekend should be fairly nice as that next system rides down towards California now taking a look here at the two meter temperature anomaly so Washington Oregon, British Columbia, put this into motion and you can see what we're dealing with right now. Slightly below average temperatures here, except for Oregon south, and then you're getting this above average Idaho and Montana as well. We go through the weekend and you can see how things are going to be warming up here across a lot of the region there. So yeah, we're a nice weekend probably in store. And then we start to change things up as we go to that Pacific North American negative oscillation here. You can see these cooler than normal temperatures as we start to go 
through the second half of October. And we'll be watching that closely day by day. And this kind of shows you that the Pacific North American positive there versus the negative once you get past what October 17th or so on the European ensembles. And this is the GFS ensembles, very a close model agreement with the Pacific North American uh, positive and then negative coming up here. So probably a pattern change incoming here as we go through the second half of October. Now looking at today, October 9th, Wednesday, you can see Seattle 63, some upper 60s, Willamette Valley, and places east, you know, fairly warm here, still looking at some 70s widespread. And we go through Thursday, there's Friday, we start to warm things up a bit, 70s return to the Willamette Valley here, look at this upper 60s maybe for some of southwest BC. There goes Saturday, look at that 70 for Seattle, and we might even do better than that in some of the, a couple of these days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, fairly warm as well. And then these systems try to roll back in here, and you can see these highs really drop off as we go through next week so we'll be watching that closely and this is looking at the european extended run and just kind of showing you that we are going through our fall transition you can see these temperatures uh, slowly but surely tailing off as we go through the month of no uh, november and the blue line is the control run you can see it kind of going through some cooler periods there than some warmer periods there maybe through mid-november but just kind of showing you here what you know what we're likely to be expecting here as things start to cool off as we go on into the fall uh, season now looking at precipitation uh, totals here again we're looking over a thousand hours out you can, so you can kind of see the ensembles here how much precipitation we're looking at as we start to head on into our rainy season and again October 14th through the 24th uh, western sky after sunset we're going to be doing forecast cloud cover for this as it comes so uh, we'll look into that some in a moment but also I, I did want to show you this um, more of the same tomorrow night looks like I think th that means Thursday night this is Mark Stewart I storm chased with him quite a bit this is some of the scenery that we got up there in Mount Rainier just an absolutely once in a lifetime show the most you know just an amazing lenticular cloud show with the aurora in the backdrop there and it was actually fairly warm up there it was just an absolute dream so uh, yeah there's my buddy mark stewart here and we were with a couple other guys as well professional photographers that got some amazing stuff and i i shared one of my time lapses here this morning on uh, x so check that out uh, yeah, it's it just been pretty, uh, pretty amazing here. And I believe I can just actually probably click on that and just uh, check this out. Um, let's go to, to this and I'll, I'll show you what I got here. Let go. So yeah, this is a, one of the time lapses I got. I got about probably five really nice time lapses. And of course the quality is not gonna be good. I just recorded this with my smartphone there, but yeah, exciting stuff. I mean, you can't really beat what we saw the other night up there, but yeah, there might be some more solar activity in the form of the Aurora coming here over the next few days. Now, taking a look here, I, I did want to show this as far as the comet view, and let's go out towards October 12th. I believe this is maybe when the start of it becomes viewable. And you can see as we go through the 12th, maybe some hope for some viewing here across Pacific Northwest, but this next frontal system is off the coast. But by the 13th, still not bad. We go through the 14th though, and we start to bring some clouds in here, but we may still get a shot depending on how this forecast unfolds. But you can see we got frontal systems out here as well, but you can still catch some clear skies at times. So anyway, you know, there's always some hope when you're looking off in the extended forecast as far as a cloud break here, but that's something we'll be watching as we get closer to the, the comet forecast. Now looking at the six to 10 day precipitation outlook above average here across Pacific Northwest. I mean, a little bit at odds at what the weather models are saying here, but they are including Washington, Oregon, and that. And here's a 6 to 10 day, 8 to 14 day, and then 8 to 14 day precipitation, tongue twister there. Uh, and you can see, yeah, some of those systems may be moving in here. The Climate Prediction Center is picking up on that. So anyway, um, yeah, I'll get back to work on my time lapses here and all this stuff. I've got so much data that I'm trying to organize it and whatnot. So I'll probably do some of that here today. But anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Otherwise, click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.